Sam Bankman Freed, the once darling of crypto, has now been unveiled to be nothing more than a homeless looking scammer. Now, while tons of videos have been made on the collapse of FTX, I uncovered something no one is talking about. And that is what I believe was his getaway plan once his fraud was discovered. There are three parts and include laundering millions of money through the Bahamas and the United States, all with the help of US officials. And in this video, I'm going to explain the three pillars of this scheme I found and how I came to my conclusion. First, let's do a quick backstory on SBF and FTX. SBF's company, FTX, was a leading cryptocurrency exchange, which is an online marketplace for users to buy, sell, and trade their crypto. SBF owned both FTX, the currency exchange, and Alameda Research. Alameda Research operated essentially as a hedge fund. Alameda was the sister company to FTX, but was supposed to operate as a completely separate entity. And to the outside world, FTX was the darling of crypto. It's where you would put your crypto if you wanted your crypto to be safe. Part of SBF's appeal is that his parents were compliance attorneys. He didn't drive a nice car. He didn't dress with fancy clothes. He was the everyday guy. He just wanted to make billions of dollars and give it all away. And he was doing good in 2020 and 2021, but in 2022, everything changed. In November 2022, a series of events over just 10 days caused FTX to completely fall apart. Rival exchange Binance threatened to sell all their FTT tokens, which were used on FTX and really the only source of the company's wealth, though we didn't know this at the time. This caused FTX to announce a liquidity crisis, meaning they didn't have enough money to cover both the redemption, but also the impact that such a large sale of tokens would have on the market. They tried to get a rescue from investors, but even Binance, who was willing to buy all of FTX's non-US business, backed out after taking a closer look at their finances. With no one to save them, FTX filed for bankruptcy protection. SBF stepped down and their assets were taken over by the Bahamian government. But before this tremendous downfall, SBF and FTX were taking steps to build a massive money laundering operation. Which leads me to the first part in this money laundering scheme, making money. The best way to make money in crypto was running an exchange that offers both crypto derivatives and a spot market. Have you heard of buying and selling things? Well, in the world of cryptocurrencies, there are two ways to do it, spot trading and derivative trading. Spot trading is like buying candy at a store. You pay for it right now and get it right away. This is good for when you only want a little bit of candy for a short time. Derivatives trading is like making a bet with your friends about what candy you'll have in the future. You promise to buy or sell a certain type of candy at a certain price in the future, and if the price goes up or down, you can either win or lose money. Both spot trading and derivatives trading help make it easier for people to buy and sell cryptocurrencies and make the whole market stronger. FTX specialized in derivatives while also providing these spot markets, allowing people to trade over 300 cryptocurrency pairs. This means more and more money for FTX and Alameda, and they were able to make this money without dealing with regulations that the US or UK would impose. Regulations that while some crypto people hate, often do make a lot of sense. But in order to do this, FTX needed a country that was friendly to crypto. Initially, that country was Hong Kong, but regulations started to change and FTX needed to find a new place to set up shop. And the Bahamas came to the rescue. The Bahamas granted FTX the two licenses it needed, a spot license and a derivatives license. Now being able to operate both the crypto derivatives and spot market was essential for SBF. The company's global trading business propped up by the money made from derivatives and spot drove the company's revenue from 90 million in 2020 to more than 1 billion in 2022. You may be thinking, why didn't they go to any other country? Outside of having loose regulations, the Bahamas is a known offshore jurisdiction and commonplace for criminals and money launderers. Which leads me to the second part of this money laundering scheme. See, the Bahamas reputation for money laundering goes back to 1935 when a group of wealthy businessmen rose to power as they helped other rich Americans evade taxes. These men found a clever way around the system through the Bahamas Insurance Company. This insurance company had no income, no assets, yet they offered fake interest deductions 
and loans that significantly reduce what taxpayers would have to pay in taxes. With the headquarters in the Bahamas and the license to operate FTX as he saw fit, he was almost complete with the plan to launder money. <laughs> Once he started stealing money from his users and transferring it to Alameda Research, he needed a way to get the money into the states. And that is where the last part of his money laundering scheme came in. With some help from US officials, of course. Here's what happened. In 2020, a company called FBH bought Farmington State Bank. The town of Farmington where the bank is located has just 146 residents. And it's so small that Google Street View doesn't even cover the whole town. Its single branch had three employees until 2022 and didn't offer online banking or even credit cards. It instead specialized in agricultural loans to farmers. FBH bought the bank in 2020. The chairman of FBH is Gene Chalopin, who along with being a co-creator of Cartoon Cop Inspector Gadget in the 80s, is the chairman of Dell Tech Bank, which like FTX is based in the Bahamas. Dell Tech's best known client is Tether, a crypto company with $65 billion in assets offering a stablecoin that is pegged to the dollar. A crypto with a stablecoin that has shown no proof of reserves and has a market cap of $60 billion. Then in March of 2020, FTX sister company Alameda Research invested $11.5 million in FBH, the bank's parent company. The net worth of Farmington State Bank at the time that FTX invested was actually $5.7 million, according to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So why would FTX invest more than double the value of the company? Sounds suspicious, doesn't it? But that's not all. After buying the bank in 2020, FBH applied for Federal Reserve approval to facilitate cryptocurrency related transactions. The bank got federal approval in June of 2021, and nine months later, FTX invested in the bank that was now equipped with a Federal Reserve license. Before FBH bought the bank in 2020, the bank had around $10 million in deposits. This was steady for about a decade, but in Q3 of 2022, the deposits shot up to $84 million. $71 million of the 84 was in just four new accounts. A bank's deposit jumping from 10 to 84 million after an acquisition should have thrown off huge red flags for someone at the FDIC. See, when Alameda Research, an offshore crypto hedge fund located in a known money laundering and tax evasion country, bought a significant stake in a tiny bank in the middle of nowhere, huge red flags should have went off because federal regulators would have needed to approve FTX buying a stake in a US licensed bank, but nothing happened. This investment was approved and there's no evidence I've seen that shows officials did even a sliver of due diligence. Now where there's the money laundering coming? Come close, let me tell you. This is how they go to work. Alameda Research would take some of the stolen funds from FTX customers and wire it to Farmington State Bank. And since FTX is a large shareholder of the bank, they can easily direct any of the three employees to process the wires with no further research. Once the money is in the United States, anything can happen to it. A smart money launderer would leverage the fact that it's in the US and send the money overseas to places like the UK, France, or Singapore because those countries would see the money coming from the US and assume that due diligence was already conducted on the source of funds. And remember, this is all possible because US officials who should have stopped this transaction at the very least were negligent and the very worst knew exactly what was going on and helped the scammers steal even more money from FTX users. So ask yourself, was this just a series of three happy coincidences or was there something else going on? Did SPF's millions of dollars in donations to political figures play a role in some people turning a blind eye? And did he use those connections to steal millions of dollars of customer funds from FTX and divert them into the United States as completely clean funds? That's for you to decide. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment. And if you like this video, a like would be truly appreciated. All right, I'll talk to you on the next video. Peace.